haven't done extensive prep yet on Alabama. But I've seen Alabama a fair amount this year just from watching other games. We know that Alabama is going to shoot more three-pointers than probably any team that Carolina has played all season long. They, as has been well documented, really don't like to take any shot other than something around the rim or a three. And Adam, I do think it sets up a really interesting matchup in that one of the things that Carolina has done really well this year is not let teams beat them from the three-point line. Alabama wants to try and beat you from the three-point line. I do think Carolina has an advantage inside um, with Armando Baycott. Um, but, our, I mean, Alabama at times is going to have like four guards and maybe a six-nine guy out there. So it, it is two contrasting styles. Um, of course, these two teams, not with – we certainly know from the Tar perspective, with some different personnel, although Alabama still has a, a handful of guys from that game a year ago that went to four overtimes in Portland, tied for the longest game in Carolina history. I think a game Carolina left – and was such a defining game in the season for Carolina. Um, Carolina left that game feeling like it should have won it, D- just had multiple opportunities to do so and didn't. Um, I think there was some heat between these two teams during and after that game. I would expect this to be a fast-paced, intense game, two different types of teams, and – It's going to be a big challenge. Whoever wins it will have beaten a good team to keep playing. Alabama's got a guy from Pittsburgh that always makes me nervous, Jaron Stevenson, who has kind of played some but not done a ton. Yeah, and Carolina was heavily involved in the recruitment. His mom played basketball at Carolina. I think that's right. Long considered a guy that was going to come to Carolina, but then he reclassed and things changed mocks. You're the starting quarterback now. And I'm guessing Alabama's NIL game was strong there. Um, So, yes, Mark Sears, still there, really good player. He's there, there, R.J. Davis. When they need a bucket, it's going to him. Um, They've really struggled defensively at times this year. I mean, they've given up a lot of points. So, you're, but you're going to have to score to win this game. This will not be a... 68, 64, this will be a 98, 92 type of game. So you got to be, you got to put on your scoring pants if you're going to win this one. If you watched Alabama on Sunday, keep in mind, you basically saw them without Latrell Wrightsell, their best three point shooter and one of the best three point shooters in the country who left the game early with a head injury. Nate Oates already said after the game that he's going to play against the Tar Heels, which seems like a fast diagnosis on a head injury, but they've got good doctors there. So he'll make them some different than what you saw uh, against Grand Canyon. But they're definitely not as good defensively. And it's pretty remarkable how they have beaten all the teams they're supposed to beat. But more often than not, when they've played teams that are better than them, they've lost. It's not like they've been very up and down and unpredictable. You can pretty much look at their schedule and say, that's probably one they lost, that's probably one they won, and they've pretty much done that. Um, So... I mean, they're good. You, you're going to have to play somebody good. Sears is really good. Tariels, he's going to be a, a formidable challenge for the Carolina backcourt to defend. Adam, you were there in Portland. I was back in the studio. Ooh, yeah. What do you remember about that game? Pain. Well, the Tariels just uh, so many chances to win that game. And as you said, just a defining moment of what that team was. Good enough to be right there, but didn't really know how to win. And – this is a much different team. I kind of think that in some ways I think that helps this year's team because everyone was so mad about that game. But in other ways, there's a lot of guys on this team who weren't there for that. Yeah. Like Harrison Ingram isn't mad about that game. He wasn't there. <coughs> Cormac Ryan wasn't mad. Elliot Cadeau wasn't mad. Um, but it just really spoke to what that team was. I remember that Nate Oates accused Leaky Black of faking an injury, which seemed ridiculous. Um, and... Alabama was very athletic, and they they eventually made fewer mistakes than the Tar Heels, and, and that is how they won. 
Just looking at some of these stats. So Alabama's taken about 200 more three-pointers than the Tar Heels have. Carolina has three guys, Ingram, Ryan, Davis, who have taken Ingram, Ryan, over 153s. All three of them have this year. Alabama has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys that have taken 90 or more threes. After the three for Carolina, the next most prolific three-point shooter as far as attempts is Cadeau. Easy, Adam. He has 48. So a big drop there. I mean, you're talking 100 fewer three-point attempts after those three. But Alabama, you've got Stevenson's taken 91. Walter's taken 95. Grant Nelson's taken 102. Reitzel, who Adam mentioned, is taking 149. Estrada, 146. Griffin, 170. And Sears, 191. So that is a lot of three-pointers. They Again, they have taken almost half their shots on the season are threes. They've taken 2,198 shots. 1,023 of them are three-pointers. It's a huge number. Yeah, I mean, they play a very definite style. They are going to play that way. They will turn it over some, which I think might be important. Carolina was so good at holding on to the ball against Michigan State. You can't afford to turn it over against Alabama because they want to run at all times, but not just run to go to the basket, run to shoot threes. And so tar has got to be as careful with the ball, which will be a, a big part of Cadeau's game. Who was plus 20 in the uh, Michigan State game, Jones? Man, Sears averages 21.5 points, shoots 51% from the floor and 43.5% from three and 86% from the free throw line. Efficient scorer. He's good. That's going to be back-to-back games that Carolina's seen one of the better guards in the country in Walker and now Sears. So they rebound it pretty well. I think a lot of their rebounds, of course, long shots, long rebounds. So it's going to be a different type of rebounding game for Carolina. It's not as many around the rim more than likely. When Alabama misses a shot, it's going to have to be – it's probably going to carry them out a little farther. So you've got to be ready for that as well. Good free throw shooting team. Don't want to foul them. They shoot 78% as a team. I think Carolina is a good free throw shooting team, and they're right around 75, 76%. So even better than the Tar Heels, who, again, I think have had a very good free throw shooting team this year. So it's going to be a big challenge. You get to this point, you're going to have a challenge. And that's something about this event, Adam, this year. Outside of NC State, who's playing good basketball, that's it. Everybody else who has advanced to the Sweet 16 is a five seed or better. I mean, you are in line for some really good matchups. You've got UConn-San Diego State. Of course, a rematch from the championship game a year ago. San Diego State's the five seed. Iowa State-Illinois. Carolina-Alabama. Arizona-Clemson. Excuse me, Clemson's a six. So you do have Clemson as a six. Then you've got Creighton, Tennessee, Gonzaga, Purdue, Marquette and State, Houston and Duke. I mean, those are some, some big time matchups. And that's the thing. I know everybody loves when the little schools win. And you had a couple of those, Oakland and Yale. But when the good teams win, it sets up for the second weekend to be awesome. Every one of those matchups I just said are Really good teams that are worthy of being in the Sweet 16. State obviously did not have the type of season that all those teams did, but is on this run where they've won seven straight games. So these are all teams that are playing well, have had a good season outside again of the pack who's on this run. Should be a terrific weekend of basketball. You got to do something. Not that you haven't had to do something to get to this point. But you know how it is. Like, even remember during Kentucky's, like, championship run in 12, I think they played Cornell or something in the Sweet 16. Carolina played St. Peter's to go to the Final Four in 2022. You're not going to have any of those for anybody who makes it through this upcoming weekend. First weekend's kind of a festival. Yeah. Like, uh, let's see if some wacky things happen. But then you want the second weekend to be about the best teams playing really high-level games. 
And I think that's what you've got this year, which probably was not the case last year. Adam, anything else about the Tar Heels as they head into Los Angeles? No. Okay. Uh, 